an APS-C Pro camera from Nikon on the Zen line? Do we need it? How many people want it? What would it look like? What kind of specs would it have? Let's talk about that in today's video. The Nikon rumor speculation has been in overdrive over the past few weeks. Now we have potential dates for our release or training. We don't know exactly what's coming, but as more and more of us Nikon shooters talk about what we expect and what we'd like to see, one thing I've been seeing pop up a lot in a lot of the chats and comment sections is a replacement for the D500. Now, specifically, I've been using full frame for the last couple of years um, since the Z6, and I have not really thought about APS-C that much. Now, that's kind of funny to say because I do have an APS-C camera. I bought the Sony FX3. So in thinking about things, I started to wonder, well, hang on a second. What does Canon and Sony have on the APS-C line that's a pro level camera? Nothing, really. You know, most people say this is a, well, it's a cinema camera branded by Sony, but is it a pro camera? No. It shoots single photos only. If you're looking for this, sort of, you know, a video camera, it's fantastic. If you're looking for a hybrid camera, there's a lot to be desired. So if we think about the D500 and what it used to be, great autofocus, uh, great tracking, a nice pro camera with all the control that you expect on the top level D, um, DSLR cameras back in the day. So, hmm, that got me thinking. I had a D200, D300, and a D500. Now, the reason why I got a D500 is because I wanted to start shooting videos, and the video capabilities of the camera wasn't the best. Uh, it had a lot, it had a big crop on it. So I already cropped into the camera, and then there were additional crap on it. The lenses for it at the time, they were noisy. If you had a microphone on top of the camera, you could hear the lens trying to focus. The focusing wasn't the greatest of video, so there, there's a lot of things that made me go out and pick up a Z6. With that being said, technology has moved on. But now that we're in the Z line, we have lower level uh, APS-C cameras, but nothing on the pro side. And believe it or not, there's still a lot of people out there who are shooting APS-C cameras and would prefer an APS-C Z line camera on the pro side. Let's be specific about that because there are APS-C Z cameras already out, but nothing for the pro line. So what would that look like? I started thinking, hmm, since the other guys don't make a pro version, um, you have Fuji who basically is APS-C and they have a 40 megapixel camera that's out right now. What could Nikon do to really like capture both markets? We already talked about the Z8 and the Z63 and what the Z7 could be, but what about an APC camera. This new image that we saw of the ZXX, even though it's been said that it's an old prototype body that was on for sale, um, there's still speculation. I don't think everybody watches every other YouTube channels out there to see um, what people have been talking about and some people saying it's been debunked, it's not a real camera. Well, it was an old camera from the Z67 time frame, but not a new camera that's coming out. But nonetheless, that has given us thoughts about what we could get. As someone who's shooting with the FX3, it's a pretty good video camera. So for me, in thinking about what I would like to see from Nikon when it comes to a D500 replacement on the Z-Line, that camera, in my opinion, should have excellent video. Now, my four brethren are gonna say, hey, it has to be a photo camera and all these features. I agree, it has to have some good photo capabilities as well, but Time is marching on. I think photo capabilities should be a must in any DSLR or mirrorless body at this point. It's It has to be there. Unless you're coming out with this boxy shape design that you want to make specifically for a video camera. Now there's one thing that some people don't like on the fact that you know this thing has a fan on it. I don't mind the fan. I think the form factor isn't too bad. There's a slight bump from the body when you look at, you know, where it shows you the uh, screen on the fan. It's like it's tacked on the back. So yeah, it's not the smoothest thing on the back of the camera. It sticks out a bit, but nonetheless, 
the body size is pretty good. Ergonomics on Sony cameras aren't the greatest. I've said that in many videos. But when I'm using this camera, I, you know, I'm, I'm holding it this way. The buttons are at the top for record, white balance, ISO, and what is that, the iris up front. Holding the camera a little bit differently makes this something that I can work with. If you think about Nikon doing something in a mirrorless body, I don't think they need to put a fan on the back of it because Panasonic has proven that you can stick something up there in the viewfinder area and keep the camera cool. I'm not sure how they do it. I haven't seen the specs as far as how that works, but if you want to keep a camera that still looks like a mirrorless camera without a fan tacked onto the back of it, why not? You could certainly design the body a little bit thicker to help with heat dissipation. That is something that I think a lot of people are doing right now just because they want to maintain that small form factor of the camera and not increase the size. Going mirrorless means smaller camera or lighter camera, but outside as we've seen with Apple, you know, they want to make a better performing laptop. They actually had to make it a little bit thicker than the old ones for the heat dissipation. So if we added some more bulk to these cameras, I don't think that'd be a bad thing. We would need an EVF. It's not a need, but it's a want. It's going to be a regular camera. If it's not, you know, solely video oriented, so an EVF would be on there. We would want this camera to be just like any other mirrorless, small, compact, relatively light. So now with an APS-C sensor, you basically have a smaller mechanism in there that's going to be lighter. To make it a really good performing video camera, it has to have excellent autofocus really great ibis we've seen what panasonic is doing i have two sony cameras and i've seen what that's like so yes we would need that inside that camera as well now how much should it cost 17.99 19.99 that's going to be the big thing right because aps-c should cost a little bit less if they make it the same price as this camera which is 17.99 i think they could have a winner you're talking about a camera that has high-spec photo capabilities and high-spec video capabilities. What are we talking about in video? I think it should be at a minimum 6K. And it should also have the great recording codecs on the inside. Maybe not raw, but at least ProRes internally. 10-bit, 422, HQ in ProRes side. Yeah, that would be great. N-Log, certainly. Because you at least want to keep it, you know, it's a top-spec camera, keep it at the top level compared to everybody else out there that's putting on a camera. Then you still have room for now the Z63 that could basically jump into the next level, 2200, 2300, still on the cut in the A7R4 and have a really great performance on it. What do you guys think? Do you need a D500 replacement? Be it a Z90 or whatever naming nomenclature we can give it? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.